So this is our final book review for the year. This was our November, December book. Um, it was the No Spend Year, How I Spent Less and Lived More by Michelle McGar. Hopefully I'm saying that right. Um, I don't know, it's hard to, I've, I've liked all the books we've done this year, but this was pretty high up there. I think, I'm trying to think back through all the ones we've done, but this one, and for me personally, this one, and the why has no one told me this before I found really really insightful um, some of the others I enjoyed but maybe it was a lot of stuff that I personally already knew um, and although there was a lot in this one that I already knew what I loved was that she shared her knowledge while also telling a story um, <clears throat> and it's funny that I'm sure she said in this or it might have been something else that the person I've read <coughs> excuse me that she originally when she pitched the book um, didn't think it would get picked up on the idea that it was she wanted to tell this personal story within the book as opposed to it just being a here do this 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 and this um, and actually in the end they the publishing company that picked her up was the ones that really liked that idea and I think for me that is one of the best reasons this book is so good um, is that it really paints the picture of how her life was doing this this no spend year living with less um, and having so much more and so many more amazing experiences and um like she talk she does talk about the numbers um and it is a few years old not a massively old book but um it's a few years old so um i think the the figures would be quite different in this day and age like the uh, this day and age it sounds like it's a really old book but it's not um teens 20 teens something around them <laughs> maybe four or five years old oh no I can't remember um but I still think it's very relevant but it's um obviously just the basic living costs have gone up now and um, the prices of property have gone up scarily now things like that um and there's I don't think you could live on such a low budget now to just make basic ends meet and also they've got no children at the time and things like that um and also it's just living with a husband who isn't doing the no spend year and i think there's always a little bit of benefits like that whereas if your whole household are doing it out of choice or out of necessity um it's a bit different it's a bit of a different experience but i really loved all her personal takeaways i thought there was a lot of insightful moments um and personal reflection and she was very real about the mistakes that she had been making in her life prior that she didn't really register as mistakes at the time but um they were having a detrimental impact on her life um and she talks a lot about trying to find the balance moving forward as well, which I think is really good. I think taking on a challenge, whether it's a month or a year or whatever, um, is about experiencing the extremes so that we can work out um, a suitable level for ourselves. I've, I've got a really itchy nose today, so I'm really sorry if I keep scratching. Um, yeah, I think that often when we do challenges and things like that, we'll... Um, people are like oh but it's not maintainable and I think for me that's the point of a challenge is it's meant to be you're meant to experience the extremes so that you can find what works best for you uh, I think a lot of the time in life we are living in an extreme version of something um so we might be um an extreme eater in one way and so we're like oh, we're gonna do some extreme diet and things but if it's just as a challenge i think it's when you're phrasing it framing it as a challenge i'm going to do this for six months or two months or three weeks or whatever to experience the other extreme of how i'm living and then i will find the middle ground i think when you've only been living one extreme you've only been living one life or one version of something and then you're trying to find the middle ground it actually can be harder and being like I'm just gonna as long as it's not gonna be like hugely detrimental to your health wealth mental well-being anything like that um then trying an extreme before you find your your personal middle ground can actually be really really beneficial um and she talks about how moving forward she's probably not gonna do it as extreme there's a um like she didn't get a bike serviced and she'd been servicing her own bike but it'd been her only form of transport including some very long trips so she definitely needed to go and get someone to service that one properly and um, those kind of things and making those sort of adjustments um and I also think when you're being frugal for just a year um there are 
things that are wear and tear things that will wear down but won't need they'll still be functioning just about um but have if you can continued that no spend for two years three years four years suddenly there would be more things that would need replacing that would need repairing and um, i personally built that into when i did my no spend rules um there are caveats to allow for the purchase of items to repair essentials however i have to give myself a um like a breathing space window for when something gets broken to working out if i need to replace it is there something else that i could use that maybe isn't as an ideal but uh, or has two purposes already and i'm giving it a third purpose or whatever like that um i give myself a breathing window as opposed to i break it at breakfast time and by lunch time i've ordered the replacement like i didn't want to do that um so i do think when you're doing something for a shorter amount of time there are things like that that crop up that you then need to factor into doing something like this more long term um she cycles everywhere in this book everywhere like her holidays are biked um all her trips and things they go to a friend's wedding they bike um luckily they had some friends that weren't biking so they took their clothes with them but that's not always possible um and often, yeah, that we do need to go further away than a bicycle would allow. So she does talk about it. she sort of missed out on some things because she wouldn't even do public transport. So there was no buses or trains or planes or anything. It wasn't just a case of not use the car. I don't think they had a car because they lived in London. Um, not that you can live in London without a car because we lived in London and had a car, but um, they didn't. And uh, but cutting out the public transport, I think, makes things very, very tricky. Um, so that is certainly something that I was like, whoa, bow down, that's amazing. But just not something I would be able to do, even like pre-little one, maybe like locally, and then maybe just with trains occasionally, but specifically with small and um, with my agoraphobia, like just no. Just, I'd never leave the house, literally would never leave the house. So, um, but it did like her stories of her cycling and like um, the fact that she was going to have to replace her jeans now because they had a saddle stain like on them because she'd cycled in her jeans so much throughout the year um, just made me chuckle. So, and um, I think there was a really nice balance between what was humorous and like insightful as well as what was like factual and helpful. And there's a lot in this book that would like actual advice and facts and things that would help you to do a no spend year help you to live more frugally but there's also entertainment in there and you connect with it more because she's got a story with it and um so all in all i think it was so so beautifully put together such a beautiful combination of useful and entertaining and informative um and emotional and you connected with her journey and it made it so much more relatable um there was a book I personally read that wasn't book club earlier in the year that was really nice. It was a uh, money, money mum, something like that. Um, but she talks a lot about how she was brought up with good money management skills um, and how it's all kind of quite natural to her. And it makes it very, very unrelatable um, because the majority of people that are looking for help with money management um, weren't brought up with good money management skills don't find it natural to do um it was like a lockdown um this girl bought out um an ab uh, like she's in sort of extended friendship circle like a friend of a friend kind of thing so it popped up on my feed it wasn't like a big thing um but she bought out like a six week ab program which one i have from my time as a personal trainer I have a huge <laughs> issues with anyway um because abs are made in the kitchen and there was nothing about food in it but also in the blurb she talks about how she like naturally got her abs through when she was 13 and it's just that and, and she'd just always been like that and I was like you shouldn't be doing a book then if you've never had to actually achieve this and she'd also never got clients to achieve it's not like she had no qualifications at all um so it made it very very unrelatable um whereas this lady was like I was making all the mistakes, I was living the opposite of a frugal life um, and so these are the real struggles that I had within the journey um, and so it makes it much easier for you to connect with it and you to understand the problems and make it feel like oh okay well I have these problems therefore it's still possible for me to do these things um, for me to achieve these things so I thought that was really really clever um, and 
I don't necessarily think it's intentional because she just, that's who she just is. And um, she's a wonderful writer in general, wonderful writer. I think really, really uh, paints a really nice picture without overclouding it. Um, I think you can get bogged down in too many details sometimes in these kind of books that are telling a story but giving you information at the same time and I found that there was a really nice balance um, for my brain that I wasn't just like getting overwhelmed with how she was describing her sitting room or something like that. It was, I could picture enough of it to get from the book that I, what I was needed to without being bogged down with additional information. So I personally really liked that bit too. But I would love to know what you think. Um, either pop it in the comments or if you are in the membership um, and you're watching this in the membership, then do put your own video up. I'd love to hear what you've got to think. Uh, God, I'd love to think, hear what you've got to think. Yeah, I'd love to hear what you think. <laughs> I'd love to hear what you've got to say and I'd love to hear what you think. Um, next, our next book, I've put all the books for the year now into the membership so you can see what books we're going to be doing. And um, there's also a link in there um, so that you can go, I've put them all in an Amazon shopping list. So if you want to go and buy them on Amazon as well, um, full disclosure, it is an affiliate link. So if you buy through that link, it doesn't cost you any more, but I get a little thank you from Amazon um, for referring. Um, for those, let me pull up the next one we are doing. I'm already 10% into it actually. Um, Ah, da, 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 da. Oh, oh, never just, I just want the front cover. Why can't it let me see the front cover? Mm -mm. <laughs> I just want a picture of the front cover. Um, I'm getting that, I'm getting that. Cover, there we go. <laughs> so this is the one we've got next. Googling on those, trying to focus on my face, but I wanted to focus on the picture. Um, so it's called Slow, Finding Peace and Purpose in a Hectic World by Joe Peters. And um, these are all green leaves on the actual image. So um, if you can find that on there, I think it might be showing up backwards on the screen, um, but I'll see if I can fix that and edit. Um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, I'm about 10% in. It's not a massively long one. I think we can all have a lot going on in January and February. So I picked a particularly shorter book and this is also why we do one book for every two months um, so that people can actually keep up. <gasps> Um, you can tell it's Twixmas because I just want to sleep the whole time. Um, so yes, I'm looking forward to this one. Um, we've got a variety of books over the year, including a novel, which we didn't do last year. Um, we've got an actual novel in there, um, Meet Me at the Summit um, by Mandy Lynn as well. Um, but all of the six books, so 12 months, six books over the 12 months, they're all listed on there. So um, if you want to pre-order from libraries or anything like that, then you can. Um, if you want to try and find them in charity shops and stuff, then you can. Um, some are newer than others. Um, so there's one, um, Matt Paxton, uh, who was one of the uh, main presenters on Hoarders, U the USA Hoarders. Um, his book's fairly new, so it'd be hard to get hold of unless you buy new online. Um, I Kindle mine, because I like, I like, and I've got them, and I can search back through them easily, and also I find it easier to read on a Kindle than I do in an actual book. Helps me focus more. Um, but you've got more options there. So yes, all of those are listed in the membership. There's also a picture in my Instagram grid of them too, so you can find them. Um, and also if you've got the calendar, so I'm trying to make sure that people don't miss out on anything this year. Um, if you've got the Google Calendar plugin for a Happy Lifestyle Club, uh, then it will come up in there, the top of each of the month, you'll see running across the top, it'll say like January, February Book Club. If you click on that, it'll tell you what the book is and it'll give you the link to go and get the book from Amazon if you so wish. And again, affiliate links, so um, I get a little thank you from Amazon if you use that link. Um, it doesn't cost you any additional money. Um, have an amazing New Year's Eve. I'm filming this on New Year's Eve. I'm hopefully gonna now go and try and upload it because I'm actually filming on a camera instead of my computer. I'm trying to get my camera to stream through my computer as well so that Zoom, that you can tell this is probably slightly better quality than normal because the camera on my laptop is just, it's just a bit tired. It's a bit tired. Um, so I'm trying to get that to work, but um, a few slight dealing issues with it. So we'll see how that goes. Uh, but anyway, Happy New Year. Uh, thank you for 
being with me all this year. It's been a journey. Um, personally, the year's been really hard, uh, but professionally, the year's been amazing, and that's all a big part thanks to all of you. So, thank you so much. Um, I will see you soon. Ta ta for now. <laughs>